What is going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to set up cameras in your scene and a matinee. So if you come up here, go to where matinee is, and click add matinee. Oh, and we'll minimize this window that will pop up. You'll get this window pop up, and you'll get this little matinee asset appear in the scene. So the first thing we want to do is get to our starting position for our first camera. So if we come over here, let's say we want our camera here, and we want it to pan across for our first one. So in any disgrace space, if I full screen it, any disgrace space here, just right click in the gray space and click add new camera and call it whatever you want I'm going to call mine camera 1 or actually cam 1 and as you can see we have a preview now of the first camera location and if I move you can see we have a camera in our scene so that's how you first get your sort of first camera in your scene so now we're going to want to animate that and have it so it comes across and rotates to there so let's do this so let's put it quickly back to where I had it so, there. so let's do this, let's just full screen a man here there. So in here, this is our timeline. And it's only going to 5 seconds at the moment, but we want a bit of a longer video. So let's make that 10. So all you've got to do is click on the red bit and drag it out. And also click on the green bit here and drag that across. So if you look here, there's a little triangle. And what this triangle is, it's a keyframe. So we... When putting your cameras in, you automatically get the first keyframe of where you've started the camera. So, all we've got to do now is go to where you want the second position the camera to be. So, let's go to 5 seconds. And if we just zoom out, zoom back in, we'll go to 5 seconds. So, make sure you've gone to 5 seconds. So, make sure you're not at a time you don't want the keyframe to be. So, yeah, 5 seconds. Move your camera to where you want it to be at that time. So you can see by the preview. And make sure you've got movement selected. And then just push enter. So now you'll have two keyframes. And you can see here by this yellow line where the camera is traveling. So if I just come into here, click play. You can see by the preview what's actually going on. And then it'll stop at five seconds and it won't move anymore. So now let's set up our second camera. So coming over here. Oh, my light's in my face. Come over here. Let's have one that looks at the telly. And it's going to pan around to about here. So I have it from this angle. Again, to create a new camera, right click in the gray space, add new camera group. And we'll call it cam two. So now we've got a second camera, you can see by our preview, it's right there. If I move around, it's here. So the our keyframe has started at one. So if you want to move this, you can just hold control, left click, and move it. Because we want our first keyframe to be at five seconds. Go to 10 seconds in our timeline, because that's where we want our second keyframe move the camera to where we want it so make sure you're at where you're sec you make sure in the timeline you're at where you want your second keyframe move the camera to where you want it a bit more left and we'll drop it down a little bit make sure you've got movement selected and then push enter and you'll get your second keyframe in so now we've got that camera set up so that moves like that and again if we click play you'll pan across however now if i go anywhere here it won't jump to the first camera. So to get all of this happening, so that way you can set up, for example, 20 cameras and jumping between all of them at the right times, we need to set up a director group. So again, in the gray space, right click and click add director group. Now if I full screen this, you can see we now have two timelines. This timeline is gonna swap between cameras and this timeline, as we've already looked at, is what moves the cameras and what controls the settings on the cameras. So at zero seconds, we are going to want it to be the first camera. So make sure you've got director selected, go to zero seconds, push enter, and select the camera you want. So we want camera one to be at zero seconds, and click OK. At five seconds, we want it to swap to camera two. So go to five seconds, press enter again, and make sure you've got director selected, and select cam two. Click OK. Now, if I come into here, and just by looking at the preview, come to the start and click play you'll see it starts off at our first camera so camera actor 9 and then it swaps to a second one which pans across because it's exactly what we want now when we actually click play on our scene and it's going to want me to close the man editor so click it yes we're just going to be in the position we're sort of flying so what we want to do is we want to make it so it's, it actually starts at our camera and it starts doing the matinee. So let's do this. Go to where the matinee is in the scene or just select it up here, which I've already typed in. 
and where it says play on level load just tick it so now when I click play it should start from my cameras so that pans across there and then it pans across there so exactly what we want and now we want, what we want to do is we want to so if I come to here the game is still playing so what we want it to do is we want it to come out of the game when it finishes so our boys when we go to record it it's going to start recording these extra parts where we're just sort of flying around and we're just playing it so what we want to do is come to blueprints go open blue uh, open level blueprint and here we want to make sure the matinee is selected so select the matinee you're using right click and click create a matinee controller for matinee actor and whatever your one is then right click again type in quit and we want it to quit game when it finishes we want it to quit the game compile that now if we click if we click play again it should pan across both cameras and then it should quit and go back into the edit mode that has not quit let's see why that is so let's go into here go into our blueprints Compile. Okay, that's going across there. Okay, it quit that time. So I don't know what I actually changed, but for some reason it did not work the second time. Maybe it just has to recompile it. But yeah, so now it quits as soon as it's finished, which is exactly what we want because we don't want it to record any extra frames afterwards. So now what we've got to do is go back into your matinee. Let's full screen it and then you just got to click movie select what file type you want so if you want AVR you can what I tend to do is I tend to use JPEG and then I go into a video editor like Sony Vegas and I um, put all of the images in there and then render out a video but you can just use AVI set your resolution so we'll do we'll do 720p just so it'll go faster close the editor when the capture starts it doesn't really matter uh, we'll actually make it smaller just so we can see it in the background um, and that should be fine actually where's my buttons gone uh, movie that should be fine so if we just so disable movement disable turning high player hide hard disable texture seeming yeah that should be streaming should I say that should be completely fine so if we just click OK that should start making our movie Okay, we are back after the video is rendered. So you should have seen on um, either of your monitors, or if you're on just a single monitor, you should have seen it render out, and it should have closed instantly because of the blueprint we set it up. So if we just come to our folder, so if we go to our basic folder, you should go find where your project is. So mine, I've saved it to a specific location, but when you actually start a project for the Epic Launcher, you should select a location. So if we just go in. You should see this. So we go saved, and we go video capture. You should have your video. So because we saved it as an AVI, it's 2.3 gigabytes. So if I bring that up, it's usually quite laggy because AVIs don't tend to run that great. I quickly, in the time the video was, in the time I cut the video, I quickly made a smaller version, just using um, the program Handbrake. So this should be your result. So as I said, I would usually bake it out as images, and then I would go into a program such as Sony Vegas and render it out like that. But yeah, that should be the result. That is how you set up cameras. I will do more episodes if suggested showing you how to do effects on the cameras. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped, and bye-bye.